Hey everybody, it's Zach. Welcome back to the Heroverse. And guys, I just got done with Glass Onion, directed by Ryan Johnson. And guys, you know what's crazy to me? Um, this will be a non this will be a non-spoiler review. I think I'll give my spoilers at the end of the video, depending on if I really want to or not. So when I get into if I get into spoilers, I'll let you guys know before I get into the spoilers of kind of the main premise of the movie and really like you know what really went down in this movie uh to really like that really got me interested in this movie um but you know to start off you know even with the with this sequel to knives out and for people that didn't know there is a movie before this movie called knives out i literally own the movie knives out and funny enough i actually watched knives out yesterday that is definitely one of my favorite movies of all time knives out i really love the first one the fact that ryan johnson you know, you know, uh, directed and I think wrote that movie of Knives Out and he actually directed The Last Jedi and I think also wrote for Last Jedi. Still shocks me to this day that, you know, because I'm not a fan of The Last Jedi and the fact that he made it just it, it, it is crazy to me still to this day that he made such a great movie with Knives Out, but The Last Jedi was so bad. But to find out that this movie was actually being made, when I found out there was going to be a sequel to Knives Out, I was kind of like, oh, I'm really excited for this. And I think we're actually going to get other movies of, you know, kind of in this universe with uh, Benoit Blanc, which, you know, is played by Daniel Craig, um, which, you know, I'm a big fan of Daniel Craig. I love the J his James Bond movies. He literally is my James Bond. Um, so the fact of it is, is that I was really excited for this movie. Um, when I saw the promotion for this movie, I gotta say I was kind of disappointed. I was like, this looks very Netflix, looks very like Netflix budget. Does not really make me excited because once I saw the masterpiece of the cinematography and the way the story was in the first Knives Out movie with that with such a great cast, I was like, I don't know. It kind of feels like this was kind of in a way to me, it felt like a downgrade almost. Um, just how it didn't feel like, you know, it didn't really look the best. It didn't, I felt like the, I, I wasn't really, you know, excited for the cast and stuff, you know, of, you know, well, the, from the last cast into this cast. And just, I was like, eh, you know what I mean? It could, I could be at biased on the fact that I really love Chris Evans. And, you know, I got that. And also I got introduced to Anna de Armas in not the first Knives Out movie. So I kind of really just was like, so at awe of like, of me being a big fan of Chris Evans, of course, you know, from, you know, him being in Fantastic Four as Human Torch, him being Captain America, of course. And Captain America has always been my favorite. And also me being introduced to Anna de Armas. And of course, you know, Daniel Craig being in that movie, along with some other great people, um, you know, um, of the cast. So I was kind of like, I don't know about how I feel about this movie. And even when I saw the first trailer, I was kind of like, eh, this doesn't really look appealing to me. But I got to say, when I just got done watching this movie, and I'm so glad that I kind of had like a, a rewatch of Knives Out and to get ready for this movie, even though I kind of did not know when this movie was going to drop and to find out that it came out today, it, it was actually perfect timing for me doing a rewatch of Knives Out. But I got to say, between that movie and this movie, there's definitely differences. I got to say, this movie is more of like a fun ride um, other than the other one. I feel like the other one, the first Knives Out movie, was more of a kind of like a more like mystery in a more kind of a, actually, I'll even go to it right here. I even have like a picture uh, right here, right here. Um, was even like, I want to say like a more of like a, like m was more of like Clue. And if you ever played the game Clue, this felt like the game Clue. The the, the way it was it was shot, the way, um, you know, the, the set was of, of the house that they were, in, uh, they were in, the way it was kind of like, it felt more of like a, a family oriented, you know, it, it just felt like Clue. I don't know how to really say it other than the fact if you played Clue, you know what I mean? It felt like that kind of like, you know, typical, you know, mystery vibe of like a murder mystery. And it felt like, you know, very, uh, what, what I can like, it just felt like, you know, like Sherlock Holmes mystery-esque, like it felt like Clue. And I feel like, you know, again, there, there really is no other way to say it than if you played Clue, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But I just love the way that movie looked. I, I, I loved the way because it was it was so unique and different. I've never seen any like mystery movie quite like it, like a murder mystery m movie quite like it. Like I feel like that's what made this movie so special is that we haven't seen anything like it before, and it just gave a, 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 a like a kind of like a, a breath of fresh air to the murder mystery genre. And I feel like that's why this movie, you know, did, was so successful along with the stacked cast, of course, you know. I feel like especially like, this was actually the first movie I, was, I think Chris Evans did after he was done playing Captain America. So, you know, the fact of it is, is that, you know, this was such a, you know, kind of like gave me 
like it, this was kind of like a, a thing that kind of gave me hope like okay like chris evans isn't just captain america his career will like still skyrocket after that like this was something that really made me feel like okay yeah he, like as i knew he was going to be secure after he was done playing in Cap captain america I, I can't wait to see of course you know i was excited to see what else he was in but i was a little concerned that he was you know captain america for so long how how can he act outside of that since he's been this character for so long and this really confirmed to me I, I'm like I have nothing to worry about. Bro's gonna be okay. This movie really took off very well, and he did an amazing job in this movie. I don't want to give spoilers for this movie, only because you know not many people have seen this movie. So if you haven't went, if you if you're watching this right now and you haven't seen this movie, definitely go check out this movie and before you watch the the second one. Even though the second one, like I said, I'm gonna go back to it right now. Even though the second one, like I said, you know there isn't much tie into into the fur into the in, about the first movie. This movie just stands on its own. There is no paying, like, you know, homage, homage to like, you know, the first movie. There is no mention of the first movie, which I was so shocked about in this movie. There is no mention in, about the first movie in this movie. And this movie, like I said, is just, you know, it, that the, the other one's like more of a murder mystery grounded contained story. But, you know, everything just felt like, you know, just like a, a bigger of a twist and a turn in that one. Then I want to say this one. And I don't know what it is. I feel like since it was contained more the other one, I felt like there was more time to really like know the characters more in that one. There, there, it felt like you know, just it wasn't just so, like you know, this one just felt more outlandish and fun. And you know, I really didn't feel a connection with this movie until I got into the middle of the movie where you're kind of in on what's going on in the story, because I feel like even in the trailers we kind of have a sum up of, you know. Of oh, what, what what's it like uh, about you know everybody getting together on this island, and pretty much you know everybody has to figure out this one th their one friend's murder essentially. We kind of have that idea, and in the name of Glass Onion as the name of the movie, and that kind of ties into with what the what the plot line is of where they are going and stuff like that. Um, and pretty much you know there, it goes beyond that. There's it's a little bit more chaotic where we think it's more like. Where we think it's more kind of like, you know, we have an idea of like, oh, it's your typical murder mystery. Like, oh, they all got this, these, these notes to, to, to pretty much go to this island to pretty much, you know, solve somebody's mystery. But there's more than that. And, uh, and in the other one, it's kind of like, you know, someone dies and it, it's one of the family members that took out the, this person in the family. And, you know, ends up being, ends up being kind of like like and, and there of course like there there's so many people that have so many different motives in that one and, and, and it follows along here where there's so many people that have different motives but it's like in a way it like ends up not being that in 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 this you know movie essentially of of the gla of glass onion and i i really do say i i like the first one way more than i like this one but this one was such a fun ride especially because you know the cast alone you know, I like I, I'm familiar with a lot of people here. I'm familiar with Daniel Craig, of course. I'm familiar with Edward Norton because he played the Incredible Hulk. Um, I'm familiar with Kate Hudson and some projects. Whether I've seen her in Glee, I don't think I've really seen her in anything else. Um, of course, I'm familiar with Dave Bautista because he plays Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I'm familiar with uh, Kath, uh, Catherine. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, Hen. Hen Hen or Catherine Hahn. Yeah, I think it's Catherine Hahn. I'm familiar with her because it, she, she's been in so many projects. But also she uh, plays Agatha and, of course, WandaVision. And, you know, I'm, of course, familiar with Jessica Henwick. And I'm really, I'm new to uh, Madeline uh, Klein. I, I'm very new to her. I know she's in, uh, what is it? Uh, there, there's a show on Netflix. It's called uh, Outer Banks. I, I've never watched it with my sister and a lot of my family members love that show. I might have to give that show a, you know, a watch because, you know, uh, Madeline Klein is fine. Like, she's so fine. I'm, I'm definitely going to have to watch uh, Outer Banks for sure. Like, no doubt about it. Um, but, you know, I'm actually new to, uh, 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 I think it's uh, Janelle, Janella, uh, Janelle, Janelle Monet. Janelle Monae, I'm, I'm very new to her. I know she's a singer and an actress, but I, I, this is actually the first time I've, I've seen uh, Janelle Monae act. So that was really cool. I thought she did an amazing job. Um, 
She actually really had, like, she actually, you know, had a, had a big role in this movie. I don't want to say more than that, but, like, she had a really big role in this movie. Um, and also, like I said, uh, seeing Edward Norton again, that was very interesting to me because he actually is the person that gets everybody together to solve his murder. Um, but like I said, it's bigger than that. So that's not even really a spoiler. It's bigger than that. And, you know, I don't know. I, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And like I said, you know, uh, Edward Norton's character, he plays Miles. Uh, uh, what is it? Kate Hudson's character, she pr plays uh, Birdie, Birdie J. And, of course, Dave Bautista plays Duke, uh, Duke Cody. And uh, was it? Uh, uh, Genoa Monet plays, uh, uh, I think her name is, yeah, Helen. Yeah, plays Helen. And uh, Catherine Hahn plays Claire. And there's someone named, uh, I, I'm probably going to, if I pronounce your name wrong, I'm so sorry. Uh, Lizzie, uh, Od Odo I think it's Lazile Odom Jr. plays uh I think it's uh Lionel plays Lionel and Jessica Henwick plays Peg and uh Madeline Klein plays Whiskey. So these are the names of everybody that plays these characters and I kinda wanna get into spoilers at this time because it's kinda hard to like kinda it's kinda like tell why I like the first movie better than this movie. So I think as of right now like, this is, like, for, I want to say this before I get into spoilers. I do think that this movie is definitely wor worth a watch, especially this movie came out around the right time, especially with the holiday season. So I definitely think you should give this movie a watch. If you expect kind of the same contained, you know, very cluish murder mystery from the first one, and you expect you, you're going to get that in this one, you're definitely not. The first movie is better because it feels more of, like, your traditional murder mystery vibes but like in but in a, in a feeling of the clue the, of clue the game i feel like if i feel like that is what people want in murder mystery so much and i feel like the first movie is definitely better than this movie but if you're looking for a fun murder mystery ride that like you know like a, like an out like a, just like a you know just a fun murder mystery ride this movie is definitely for it I definitely think that I would put this second on the list. Not saying because it's bad or anything. I think it's good, but I don't think it's better than the first one. So I definitely think you should give this movie a watch for sure. Especially if you like the first one. I definitely, definitely think that you will like this movie. But if you're looking for... The, if you like that self-contained clue vibe, you know, murder mystery that kind of, you know, kept you on your toes and you kind of, you know what I mean, and all that stuff like that, I think that you'll like the first one, like the first one better. Because like I said, I really didn't get into this into this storyline until we got into the middle until we kind of were in on what's going on within the plot i feel like that's when i was like oh my god things are getting interesting right now i'm really enjoying this earlier on i was kind of like i don't know i'm kind of just here seeing where everything is going but it really started picking up when you're in on what's going on you're in on like you're in with like what's happening so i don't know i feel like for me i feel like the movie the first movie made me feel like on my toes the entire time and really engaging with what was happening. But I feel like I really wasn't engaging until I got into the middle of like, oh shit, this is actually happening of this second movie. Um, but going into spoilers, I'm doing spoilers right now for A Course Glass Onion. Going into spoilers, it was very interesting to me to see, uh, like I said, Madeline Klein and Dave Bautista, they're like together in this movie they're like dating and i thought i kept saying to my, my to myself this dude is old enough to be her father this shit's funny as hell that you know he like was able to get you know you know that he is dating someone that someone younger than him especially that younger and i was like okay this is kind of funny to me um especially because dave batista's character again duke is a youtuber and i thought that was hilarious coming from a youtuber myself seeing someone you know, like, like Dave Bautista in a movie playing a YouTuber. I thought that was hilarious. And I really don't even know what he was like a YouTuber for. I, I really don't even know. But I just thought that was super funny that he was like this like outlandish YouTuber. And I think he was talking about how like, he was talking about boobs and shit like that. He was talking about how like, uh you know, I don't have a problem with boobs. You know, bo boobs help people, you know, help people like, uh, like I, don't, I don't even know what he was talking about. He was talking about some stupid shit. I was like, what the fuck? So I, I, I just thought that was funny to me how like you know it just the, the, their relationship i just thought was funny i just thought it was some, some like comedic thing and i thought it was really funny that he was being a youtuber and again madeline klein's character whiskey i feel like you know the, the reason that she was really with duke is because she wanted to get her dream to like to uh she wanted her dream to come true through duke giving her kind of like you know getting like using the clout off of duke 
the YouTuber to get her dream to come true. That's the only reason why she was really with him, and I thought that was, like, oh, okay. Like, some, like, stupid reason. Also, like, she kind of, like, doesn't like being with him, be and she's only there just to, to get her dream to, like, blossom too like she's like oh he's using his dream and he's doing his dream i want to use i want to get my dream the only reason i'm with him and doing all the stuff he's doing is because i want my dream to come true and stuff like that and and you know i feel like i can really get the his like you know i can use this clout and really like uh skyrocket my career and stuff i was like oh, okay i guess i was like makes sense the way this is like the pairing is and stuff like that i kind of felt like oh she's only there because of that and all that so i kind of I, I, it just it felt like something that didn't work out like it just it felt very weird but i was like okay that it makes sense why she's there and it makes sense that he's just this outlet and he, the funny thing is he was living in his mom's house still while he was doing his youtube videos and stuff and the, the thing that i really was interesting to me is that this movie takes place in 2020 so it's in the pandemic and all of uh all of uh well edward norton's you know you know all of edward norton's you know uh you know edward norton he plays uh miles all of his friends are they're all in the like in quarantine they're all in the pandemic right now they're all in quarantine but they all get together um every year or, every, or once every year and they kind of get together like he brings every like he invites everybody to like uh to like uh to, to kind of like as, as like he invite he gets everybody together for like a get together and it just so happened that, it, that this time it's on an island and he has this place called the glass onion and pretty much you know his theme of him getting everybody together is murder mystery I'm not quite sure why but in, in a way it's it it, it it i guess it fits the plot of the story of like you know of not of the second movie called glass onion and it has to be like a murder mystery so essentially it's murder mystery themed and he sends everybody like this box that says oh you know come uh, to my island, and you, you guys have to solve my murder, essentially. So pretty much that's that that's the I, the gist of the story. And I forget what uh, Catherine Hahn's character Claire. I think she was like uh, involved in politics and stuff. I think that's that's what she was doing. And of course, uh, 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 Liz. I I, I forget uh, Liz. I think I I I I forgot how you pronounce his name. Sorry again. Uh, Lazeal Odom Jr. Uh, plays Lionel, and Lionel was like involved in like uh, inventions and stuff like that. Like I guess he like greenlit things that uh, from uh, Miles's character. I guess he works for Miles's character, and like he greenlights. I guess um like uh, like when Miles like uh, gives uh you know uh, was it uh, Lionel like 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 I guess inventions. He like puts it out for like, Miles's character, which is Edward Norton's character. So pretty much, I think he works for you know, uh, you know, uh, Miles. I, I think that that's like Lionel works for Miles, and he just like does stuff for him like like that. So that's that's his room and everything. And with again with Duke being a YouTuber and Whiskey like being there because she's like in with Duke's YouTubing stuff. And uh, what is it? Uh, Peg, which of course is Jessica Henwick's character. She is with. Uh, Kate Hudson's character playing uh, Birdie J, and Birdie J is kind of like this, uh, like I don't even know, like this model. I, I don't even really know what she was famous for. I think she was like a model slash like she made some pairs of pants and stuff like that. And pretty much uh, Peg, which is again uh, Jessica Henwick's character, is pretty much there to keep uh, you know a Birdie in check. Essentially, like she is like her manager, and like and she like she's like her damage control manager. And Birdie's character, Kate Hudson's character was so funny because she literally like was like the pinnacle of being canceled like she would like she is like her character is like very like it's like it's like oh honey you're, you're like it's like oh you're you're, you're you're like oh you don't mean to be dumb but you're dumb and she would get in get into situations where like she'd get in situations like she, she would be canceled and there were so many situations where like jessica henry's character peg would have to literally like take her phone because she said so many dumb things that would get her canceled but she's like okay that this is what we go by birdie like you you say sorry online and then and then you get offline and you let the blow over essentially and she did so many dumb things like she did an homage to uh well i think it was to uh i forget who who, who it was for i think it was uh I, I forget. I think it was. Uh, I, I I can't remember who it was for. Um, I think it was for. Uh, I don't even know why I'm blanking on the top of my head. But she did like she did blackface for somebody, and um, she she thought that uh, that uh, 
that I forget what it's called. Um, I think it's a, 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 a that a sweatshop uh, was like uh, did made sweatpants or whatever and all that. Like she like she like it, like that kind of dumb stuff and like would say oh like she like answered an email to like uh, to a sweatshop saying oh thank you for what you thank you for making sweatpants or whatever and, and she's like you didn't think that a, a sweatshop made sweatpants and stuff. And it's kind of like, no, like she, like, it was funny to me, like how like absurd that she thought that she was like being nice and stuff and, 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 and honoring people, but she was in a, in the midst of being canceled. I just thought that was funny. And like, like literally Jessica Henwick's peg was only there as kind of like her damage control person. And the reason uh, she didn't really do much, which kind of really annoyed me that they kind of, it was like, that was the only reason why she was there. She really didn't have any, like any any means of in the in the and in in being a suspect in like really I, actually i don't know i feel like in a way she was because of miles pretty much making birdie's character i guess you know making up like i guess sign something that would pretty much you know uh have him not be involved anymore and make her like say sorry and fess up to i think something that she did and pretty much he didn't want any more involvement and i guess since uh uh Peg was so involved in Birdie's career as like her manager. If she were to sign something, that would get her in trouble, but all and ruin her career, but also would ruin Peg's career because she reps, uh, you know, uh, Birdie as like kind of like her damage control manager. So really, I guess she had a stake in like kind of like uh, in the whole, you know, everybody coming together for this uh, solve my murder for Miles's murder. But like he was giving everybody a reason to want to murder him in in this in this movie, and the funny thing is is that you know ever everybody has a reason to want to murder him. Like I said, with you know Peg wanting to murder Miles because of the whole signature, you know, oh sign of of, of uh, Birdie signing that 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 thing that would kind of like ruin her career, but also ruin Peg's career. On top of uh, Duke, and like uh, pretty much wanting uh, Whiskey, his girlfriend, to like kind of like mess around with miles to have him like uh to have like uh to have let to pretty much convince miles to let duke do more like i guess uh have his big debut on this uh on on this talk show or whatever or on his uh i, I forget what it was but like really have like be able to really boost his youtube in career and have that take off and uh and pretty much you know we have uh what is it uh I forget. I forget the other uh, the other two. Uh, we have. Let me let me think. We have. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We have uh, Claire that she got money to have her like her uh, campaign take off. Like she got mo money for Miles to have her campa campaign take off. But also, it's biting her in the ass because he it wants to use this special crystal to pretty much, you know, uh, like, he wants to market it as, like, a new energy source and stuff like that, and pretty much, you know, since he pretty much, you know, uh, like, put money into her campaign, it's like she's stuck letting that happen into going forward into using this unknown substance to pretty much, you know, as this new, like, fuel for, like, housing and stuff like that, like, and it hasn't been tested, but, like, it's kind of, like, in a way, he's like, oh, I, I, I put all the money in your thing, you have to, like, help me get this in with, you know, you know, get this, you know, legal and stuff like that. You need to help me push this through, like, you know, uh, you know, you have to back me on this, and essentially. And along with, again, along with, uh, what's, what's his face? Uh, Lionel, which, again, he works in, in, in the kind, I don't, I don't know if it's the same company of Miles, but also, like, I think he might work in, like, you know, with, uh, the, the, the I, I don't even know, really, who, like, he works with other scientists and stuff like that. And he's like using like uh, Lionel to be like, oh, like I, I I've helped you get to this position. I need you to uh, back me up on this too. And they're kind of like all all owe him essentially. And th that's pretty much the, the the thing that everybody has a reason for that because it's like again, if 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 what he is doing like because again it's not tested, but like they can't back out of it because they had a, he had a stake in getting to the getting everybody to where they where they needed to go or where they wanted to go in, in their uh, in their future. In their careers so i thought that was very interesting is that it kind of made everybody stuck in a way where like he in a way a lot of them owed a lot of them owed him for like boosting their careers or a lot of them wanted something from him and it's like they couldn't but yet they had a reason for wanting to take him out because they owe they they kind of like 
um <clears throat> went in all all in with him and they kind of like you know had a hand in him helping them out so it's like they had a reason to want to take him out because he would keep bringing it up of him helping them and it's kind of like they they were kind of trapped in to him helping them so it's like they couldn't back out because he couldn't he wouldn't allow it essentially and they couldn't like survive off that because they let their careers are built off of what he did and the money that he gave all of them and the success that he gave them so it's like they all had motive but what i thought was very interesting to me is that we had um we had uh 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 Jan janella monet's character which again she played uh helen or i guess you could say she played uh andy essentially she played andy at least so we think and we have the idea of like when we first meet andy is that they all look at Andy like, oh, what's she doing here? And it kind of sets up the idea of like a Benoit Blanc gets gets sent, uh, uh, essentially a box to show up to this to the island. Like they thinking it's an invite from Miles to the island of, of in, into the house of Glass Onion, and pretty much you know thinks that oh I was invited here, but he ends up saying to Benoit like no you actually I didn't invite you here. It was a dummy box and you know but we're gonna go along with it that you know this is a murder mystery theme and you know what what better yet than you know to have like the number one you know detective here for my murder mystery you know like you know get the gathering like what 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 better than to have you here but he even picked up that everybody essentially like hasn't has like a motive to want to take him out and he's like you know we can't take this lightly that you know you didn't bring me here and I am here, and everybody has motive to want to take you out. And he catches, like, everybody. He catches Whiskey with Miles, and he catches uh, Duke watching Whiskey with Miles, and he catches, you know, the conversation between, uh, you know, uh, Peg and Miles about, oh, like, wanting uh, Peg to, uh, or wanting, uh, you know, a birdie to sign that, sign the thing that would get her in trouble, but also ruin her career, but also ruin Peg's career. He caught that. And he also caught, uh, what is it? He also caught, you know, the, heard about the whole, uh, what, what is it? The whole, uh, I always forget these, these other, like, uh, Claire and, uh, and Lionel's situation of them kind of being in the same boat of the whole, uh, using that, that, that rock as like in, as like a fuel source. They're kind of stuck in that same boat where like he needs, Miles needs them both to be, to back him. And it's like they have no choice because he put money into, uh, like I said, into Claire's career and also put money into uh, in giving uh, Lionel all of his tech to pretty much keep him, you know, to keep him running in, in his business or whatever, or like with all the ideas and stuff like that. So it's like he, he, he like helped so many people out. It's like they can't back out, especially it's hard for, again, uh, a Claire and, and Lionel to get out of that because he needs them the most. So really they feel like, oh, this could really ruin us. This could send us to prison because he's not, he wants us to, to use like to manage back him on this fuel source, this rock. But it's like, we don't, we, we never tested it before. It could be dangerous. And there, and there's more of a reason to like why they're so involved the most. There's more of a reason to that, which I'll get to in a minute because when we have, you know, uh, you know, uh, Janella Monet's character, uh, you know, Andy there, we end up finding out essentially that Andy was, you know, well, we don't, they don't know, but we end up finding out that, you know, Andy, you know, was a partner to Miles and they were, they were both partners to that company before Miles ends up screwing Andy out of, Andy out of the company and essentially Andy's friends was uh, Claire, was Lionel, was uh, Birdie, was Duke. What like like his, those were all of his friend all of uh you know Andy's friends until Miles, you know screwed Andy out of the company and everybody took, you know Miles's side because Miles got everybody to where they needed to go and they and they were dependent on Miles and Andy but since when you know Miles couldn't get his way with Andy because they were both partners about you know him wanting to use that use that rock as a new fuel source he wanted to like push that and he's like it's too dangerous we cannot do it essentially and essentially ends up kicking her out of the company so he can push that with the help of my with the help of all the rest of andy's friends and that's why andy you know that's why they all took miles aside because 
they were kind of Miles helped them to where they needed to go and they and they depended on Miles, so that's why they didn't take Andy's side on Andy actually coming up with the company. And that was very interesting to me that they all turned on Andy because Miles because Andy still had the higher power of the company and they depended on the company and, 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 and that money to keep them where they needed to be. So that's why they turned on their on their friend Andy, which was like sh a shocker to me when that happened. But you know, what was really interesting to me is that the person that when we think the, the, the person, because we think the person that was Andy is Andy, but it actually turns out that that isn't Andy, that's actually Andy's twin sister, Helen. And Helen is the one that actually gave Benoit Blanc the box saying that, and she came to Benoit saying like, look, I think my sister Andy, my twin sister Andy was, you know, murdered. I think, you know, I think it wasn't a suicide is what they're claiming it to be. I think she was murdered. And, you know, this box was sent there to her, which I, I, I got to say, the whole box being sent to Andy after the, the, and the whole plan is to have Benoit go in to uh, uncover who killed, you know, uh, Helen, who killed, uh, you know, Helen's, who, who, Helen's sister Andy, like who killed her twin sister. But, you know, Benoit came up with the idea, well, they don't know, it didn't come out yet that your sister is dead, so why don't you go in? But once you go in there, it'll activate, like, someone's going to want to finish the job because it, I'm counting on, because, you know, Helen and Benoit were counting on that the person that killed your sister is probably going to be there and are, is going to want to finish the job. So I don't know why, if that is true, why a box was sent to Andy's place if whoever murdered Andy, you know what I mean, what, like, why would they send her a box afterwards or why would they send her a box even, like, afterwards what before they killed like after they killed her or even before they killed her if they wanted nothing to do with her why would they send her the box to have to have helen find that box at her other twin sister's place and take it to benoit i didn't i didn't think that really made much sense i was like why would the box be sent there to have the but i was like it needs to be sent there to have this plot happen and i feel like that's kind of like a it's a dummy it's a dumb it's like it's i, I feel like in a way that's it's a cheap way of like this makes no sense but this needs to happen to have the twin sister come in to to go to Benoit Blanc to have him have an excuse to show up on the boat, and pretty much you know go with the go with the plan that they have set in motion where Benoit and Helen is 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 filling in for her sister Andy because that's not out yet that her sister died and she can go in and pretty much you know and 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 pretty much disrupt they're because they're called the disruptors like the group of Andy's friends are called the disruptors. And, she, and, and and Benoit and Helen went to when when Helen to go in as Andy Andy and pretty much be that disruptor to shake everybody to their core and to whoever murdered Andy to be like oh my God I didn't finish the job and really shake things up into what's going on to really find and find out and discover who the actual killer is so in a way I feel like it's a dumb plot line that the box was sent to Andy's house even though no one everybody betrayed Andy and and and, the, and and I don't find it where the box would be sent to Andy's house if they want nothing to do with Andy I just felt like that really made no sense but I was like okay it needs to happen for the for the sake of the plot so I was like okay whatever um but you know the finds out that you know there's a moment where like what ends up happening is there's a big party and Dave Batista's character Duke ends up like like choke like ends up dying essentially and ends up dying on the sake of on the fact of there is, I think there is, uh, I can't remember what the, what the fruit was. I think it was, uh, pineapple. He was allergic to pineapple and they ended up killing him because that was in his drink. And the, and right away he's like, okay, like they're all in the room and they're like, okay, like this is, I think someone murdered him because this isn't a coincidence that, you know, he got, you know, he drank, you know, not will, not knowingly pineapple when he even knew that there was pineapple here in these drinks and he wouldn't take it someone gave it to him and someone murdered him so it's kind of like uh and the, and, the, and the moment like okay we weren't expecting that duke would be the one to be murdered so i was like okay this doesn't really make much sense so that's why it was like it was kind of like deflecting on the fact of like everybody having a reason to want to go after miles and then duke ends up dying so i was like oh my god i was like okay like wh what's going on here I, I thought oh my god because earlier in the sequence of the, in this party sequence when everybody is kind of you know like w wants to go home essentially because they're not just they're not in the mood with all the bullshit that's going on um because the, uh, essentially miles's plan of having this murder mystery party ends up getting undone on, on the fact of Benoit being so smart that he ends up pretty much ruining 
the plan that Miles had of having a fun, you know, murder mystery, you know, uh, you know, weekend or, you know, trip on his island with his friends ends up getting undone because Benoit is such a good, you know, detective. He just ends up discovering the, the plot and, and, and the mystery of, of the game ends up pretty much ruining it for Miles. And everybody's like, oh, like, Miles is like, I don't know what to do here with my friends then because this, I, I had all this planned out. I had it, had it written up by this famous person. I forget who he mentioned, but it was just funny that Benoit just ruined the like his like game that he's been planning the, the like this big game for his friends he ends up just ruining for all of them and but they're all happy about that because they didn't want to do a murder mystery thing they're like oh let's just be here and let's do this like whatever and but there's already tension there even like to even ha and even benoit pointed out saying that i i the reason i i solved your mystery your game your murder mystery game for your friends is because you're just giving them a reason to like there's reasons that they want to they want to take you out and this would be a perfect perfect opportunity for them to do that. That's why I had to like this isn't fun in games. The fact that I wasn't sent, I was sent here, going along where he's saying I was sent here for no reason, and we can't take that lightly. And that was I think that was in, my brother like Nick said that was no homage to the first movie where like you know, I was sent here you know you know and I don't know who sent me here and we can't take that lightly. Which that happened to him in the first movie. It's not really a spoiler, but that's what happens to him in the first movie where he like doesn't know who sent who hired him to uncover the murder in the first movie and i felt like you know he was kind of going along with that like saying i don't know who sent me here and someone clearly was using that as an excuse for your murder mystery to actually take you out and i see that all every every so-called friend of yours has a reason to want to take you out so that's why i had to do it or whatever so i found it like okay this is very interesting that you know he is like wanting to take that that's why he solved the mystery so quickly because he doesn't want to give anybody the perfect like opportunity to take out miles but the fact of it is, is that there's a big sequence where, like, the electricity, like, totally goes out. And and what was very interesting to me is when the electricity goes out, we have everybody just flipping out. Because prior, when Duke ends up dying, we end up finding out that Duke took Miles' cup that has his name on it. And Miles points it out saying, oh, my God, that, that – because he doesn't know previously that it was, like, pine, like it was pineapple juice that was in Duke's drink to take him out. He didn't, we, don't, we don't know that until later. But the moment we're, like – Miles is like, oh my god, someone actually is trying to kill me, and the electricity goes out, and we have, we have one, we have Duke, Duke's gun missing, because Duke ends up just carrying around, like, uh, ends up carrying around just a gun the entire movie, just ends up shooting it off and being weird like that, it's like, I never go anywhere without my, without my gun, and ends up being missing, and we think it's Whiskey that takes it, because Whiskey was at Duke's body, um, but it was, yeah, I'm doing a video, um, sorry about that. And it ends up being like, you know, Duke's, like, like we end up, we end up thinking it was like, because it ends up not being on Duke's body. And we end up thinking Whiskey has it, um, which is his girlfriend. And then, you know, and then it's pretty much just like a panic. And then the lights go off because I apparently uh, Miles had that set off for like the big thing is that, oh, the electricity will go out at like this time at midnight. He ends up flipping out saying, okay, like I'm worried now because something was in my drink. Someone just died. Someone tried to murder me just now by putting something in my drink, but I didn't take it. And the electricity is about to go out, and and there's a gun missing. So the whole run around where like we see, uh, you know, we because we, we think again, we think it's, uh, you know, Andy running around, but as we know, it's it's uh, Helen that's running around, and pretty much because Helen took the opportunity when she had to like make a reason to leave earlier. So that way she could search the rooms and get more information to look for something, which I'll get into that, what she was looking for in a, in a minute. But the fact of it is, is that Helen, and, or, yeah, the fact of it is, is that Andy ends up getting shot. And we think it's the person that wanted to finish, or, or we think it's the person, I, well, actually, we don't even know at this point that, you know, about the plan with, you know, Helen, you know, about Andy having a twin sister, Helen, and everything working together and all that stuff. But at this moment, I was wondering why Benoit was like, had a tear in his eye about Andy dying. Because already I thought Andy did have a motive to kill Miles in the beginning of the movie when everybody looked at Andy and I was like, oh my God, she's gonna be the she's the one that's gonna take this opportunity to take out Miles because right away before I knew about anybody else's motive, I we we knew instantly that Andy shouldn't be there because she got you know because him her and Miles were on were in the same you know came up with the same uh you know you know, a company together, 
But Andy ended up, you know, getting kicked out of the company, and she had a motive. So before, right away, that was my first suspect of killing Miles. But it totally went, like, in a totally different direction. And, you know, when I saw Benoit, like, had a tear, I was like, why is he crying? This is very interesting to me. And he ends up getting everybody together and saying, we need to solve. We're going we're gonna to f- finish this right now. Ends up getting everybody into the room and saying to everybody, like, you know, there's something bigger here that, you know what I mean? And, and we're going to, and we're going to, I'm going to explain it right now. And pretty much ends up explaining, and then we get the whole backstory where then, you know, getting a couple minutes earlier of how Benoit got, you know, sent to, you know, and how, how he even pretty much got in, like, got, you know, invited to the Miles' island and with the whole glass onion, you know, his house named, and, 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 and to really, like, make, make this make more sense, the glass onion house is like a big glass dome on the top of his house that looks like an onion. And that's pretty much why it's called Glass Onion is because the, he has, like, this one special room. And it's a big glass dome that looks like an onion, and that's why it's called Glass Onion. And, you know, that, of course, that that's when we get information on, uh, again, uh, you know, Helen, or, you know, Andy's twin sister, pretty much thinking, okay, my sister didn't die, she was murdered. And then Benoit's like, okay, well, you're going to go there and pretty much bring out the, cur- the killer, but he's going to want to finish the job. Essentially, that killer did finish the job trying to shoot, again, thinking he shot Helen, I think he shot Andy, but it was actually Helen, and that's why there was a tear on Benoit's face. And essentially, you know, she, every moment where, like, it made sense where, like, Andy, we think it was Andy, on the boat, was really holding onto the boat, it was because Helen was, a, like, w- was not, was a scared of being on the water and stuff like that. She was scared of being, about being on boats. That's why she was grabbing so hard on the boat. Again, there was a moment where we have uh, Claire and we have Duke wanting to co- confront Andy, and pretty much, you know, Andy is walking down the steps all like, you know, uh, like she's like, you know, like kind of like, you know, lightheaded and stuff like that. It's because Helen doesn't drink and Helen was drinking. And that's when Claire's like, oh, there's something up. You know, she's playing at something. We got to figure out what it is. So I love how like we kind of got stuff that made sense later in the movie. And that's where things started really getting good when we find out that, you know, uh, that uh, Andy had a twin sister named Helen. And, and Helen and, and, and Benoit had the idea of, like, okay, let's figure out who murdered your sister, essentially. And, you know, we really don't end up finding out until, like, later in the movie that, you know, that uh, the reason that we end up finding out later in the movie who actually killed Duke, who actually tried to kill, you know, uh, you know I, I guess you could say uh, Andy, but actually Helen and all that stuff. And really was interesting to me when, 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 the, when, the, the, when the murderer tried to finish the job to kill Andy, it, it actually, Andy didn't die. There was a, a pocketbook that, you know, that Helen did, I guess she does like these crossword puzzles like with her students, and she had that book with her and she would write down notes into finding out who killed her sister, taking in like, you know, pretending to be her sister and trying to get information on everybody to find out who actually had motive to kill her sister, Andy. So that was very interesting to me that that pocketbook saved her. And, but, you know, Ben was like, okay, like, you know, they think you're dead and we're going to use this. So he ended up using uh, Jeremy Renner's hot sauce. And I thought that was funny. There was a lot of like funny things in here where like Jeremy Renner had hot sauce. And I thought that was super funny. And there were some other like funny nods in here as well. But the hot sauce ended up getting up, you know, uh, they ended up using the hot sauce on, uh, on, on Helen's, Hel- Helen's body or I guess you say Andy's body to say that oh like look you know you the the, the the make the killer think that he actually was successful on on doing this but also it gave a, a perfect opportunity for you know Helen to go up in the glass onion to figure out where the note where the napkin was of of uh, Andy's original idea of coming up with the company because that's how Miles took the company from Andy is because she uh, I guess you know her friends. And, and also, uh, Miles, like, her friends agree with Miles that he came up with the idea and about him coming up with the company and all that. I forget where the napkin was. I, I, I think she had the napkin, but I guess she wasn't thinking that way of, like, if she thought her friends would back her up, but they ended up not, ended up not backing her up. Because she ends up threatening everybody with the, with, like, Miles with the leather and everybody with the leather that she, with, like, the, with the napkin that she came up with the company. And that essentially is what started off everything to, uh, which essentially started everything to pretty much, you know, the the idea of why everybody really, one, why everybody didn't like 
Andy, because of the, like, earlier, you know, with also Andy being betrayed by her friends, but also the fact that Andy tried, you know, getting it back at everybody, saying, like, I have this, this is going to screw you all over because you guys screwed me over. And we essentially get the idea that uh, Edward Norton's character ends up being the killer. That, and I'm so, I'm so annoyed at myself I didn't pick that up, that Edward Norton was, did end up being the killer. And, and, and which was a shocker to me that Edward Norton's character didn't end up, like ended up being the killer because I don't know why, but like I, I really didn't didn't see that. I, I like I went it's like it's right there, but I didn't see that coming. And that was so perfect on the fact of having the fact that it was a murder mystery on that he wants to get everybody together. Benoit stopping the game of the murder mystery to, to essentially make it so that way because he sees everybody has a motive. To have Duke accidentally drink his drink and have his name on it, and every, and then we think at this moment everybody is trying to go, is everybody's trying to go after him at this point. That if it wasn't for the moment of Duke drinking his drink at that moment, we I would have thought to myself, like I, I would have thought to myself, I don't even know if I would have like predicted to him that he was still like, he was the one that that was the because again we initially think it's about him that he is going to be murdered. That's initially what we got from the trailer is that he was going to be murdered. But actually, is is more beyond that. That's what they that that's what made this movie so well is that they weren't going with what the first movie was. They kind of did a, 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 a something different. It's like they thought that we were, we thought we were going to get the same thing we got in the first movie, where it's like okay, everybody gets invited. He ends up the person that invites everybody to the island that 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 said oh to solve my murder, ends up being the one that actually isn't the one that is murdered. So I love that. It's like if it wasn't for that that the the act where we get like we're kind of in on what's going on of again Andy having the twin sister Helen and pretty much you know Helen you know get it you know pretty much you know hiring Benoit to find out who actually killed her sister Andy. This movie really I feel like wouldn't be good because it would have been like the exact same thing from the first movie. But even the first movie did it in a, such a special way because it had that clue vibes and because it had like it was so self contained. I feel like this movie just would not have pulled it off if it wasn't for this this with the twist of Andy having a twin sister named you know, her named Helen and a twin sister named Helen and really hiring Benoit to uncover Andy's murder and to find out that you know Miles actually ended up meeting with and Andy to print and, and gave her sleeping pills to like to and put her in, put her in the car to make it look like that she just you know killed herself in the garage of just sitting in her car and it was like it was the uh it was the, like the gas that like that, that killed her in the garage it was like I, I was just like oh my god like you know what i mean it's it, it's just crazy to me that he like that that it was in something that we just saw because I feel like it's always like the big star names that you know could possibly be the person, and I don't know why I just didn't think of it was like Edward Norton's character. But that's what again it was that it was the twist of it was it wasn't like it was the twist of like the oh everybody's trying to murder me that made us think that the, to make it like oh like no it's bi it's bigger and it's beyond that. But it was so clever because the only reason why he that he that put the pineapple juice in in Duke's drink is because it finally came out that. That uh, what is it? That uh, that uh, I can't, why, why, why am I why am I blanking? That Andy actually died. It finally came out that Andy actually died, and he kind of had the, had the realization, oh crap, this is this like like I, I'm shocked like he did. I don't know if he like realized at that moment like oh I, I think he did. I don't even know if he did. Um, I don't even know because I think because the, the, what really wasn't really making sense to me is that now I'm just think, realizing this now is that he found out, the Duke found out that Andy was alive because it finally came out. So that's why, um, you know, what, that wasn't really the only reason why he like put the pineapple juice in Duke's drink. It's also because Duke and, and, uh, and Claire all rushed to Andy's place after Andy sent that note saying that, oh, like, you know, you guys screwed me over. I have the thing right here. This is going to screw you guys over. And she went, I think they went to say sorry, sorry or they wanted to be like, oh, like, can you still help us out, you know, after, you know, you know, after, you, I, I think they kind of realized that they were wrong and they wanted to say sorry, but w when, uh, when Duke got there early, he got there earlier, earlier than everybody because he rushed there on his motorcycle, he almost got, like, pancaked by Miles's car, and that's why 
uh, you know, Duke says earlier in the movie because Miles ends up having like this little sports car, it's a little sp- like it's like a it's like a copy of, of of the sports car he has outside of the Glass Onion on this like helipad, and he even says that oh you know you almost uh, pancaked me you know with your car or whatever, and and and, and that's said earlier in the movie, and when he says you know and that way that why it makes sense when you know he had an idea that he went to because I think it was confirmed. At that moment when he had the realization that, oh my god, Andy is dead. And realizing, oh my god, when we rushed to Andy's house and Andy wasn't answering, but I almost got hit by Miles' car. Miles must have been the one to kill Andy. And that's why he said he said to Miles, like, oh, this changes everything. I Now I'm, I'm blackmailing you that I know that you killed Andy. I need you to help, you know, let me go on your talk. Let me go on, like, the, like the, the talk show or let me go on your... Uh, your your advertisement channel to advertise my YouTube channel and stuff and and that and that way because I'm not, and, and I won't like expose that you killed Andy like this changes everything that's why he poisoned Duke and with the pineapple juice and stuff like that so in all in all seriousness is that the, like he only killed Andy because she had the leather and he took the leather from Andy because he wasn't gonna take a chance on that on the fact of Andy taking back over the company that Andy started with Miles so. He didn't want to lose everything. He didn't want to lose what he was trying to do with, you know, trying to push that unknown rock as, like, a fuel source. He wanted to, like, push it. And apparently, um, Claire and also, uh, like, I'm trying, it was Claire and, and uh, Lionel discovered that that rock is is highly, you know, explosive. And pretty much at, at in that realization, Claire's like, oh, like, Claire says to Lionel, so pretty much, you know, I, I pushed this forward for a whole bunch of new housing. So you're telling me that I pretty much, you know, I, I just pushed to have another Hindenburg. Like I, I pushed for a, a, a lot of Hindenburgs about to go off essentially saying like, you know, about, about the explosion that's about to go off from like from these houses because it's highly flammable and they're very high and it. Like they're able to explode because of the, the gas that lets off of this, of this rock. And I forget what, I think it's called clear. Are, are, are clear i think that's the name of the of the rock that he that he wants to do is called clear and it's apparently very like flammable and it's and it, because of the gasoline that it, it emits off of like it, that it burns off of so or i guess that it makes from using this as a fuel source and they're, they already know that they're screwed essentially and, that, and they're trying to get out of it but it's kind of like it's too late because he boosted claire's uh you know uh you know claire's uh campaign and also boosted you know lionel and in, in his work of technology and stuff like that and also doing stuff like that he gets the tech that miles gives him or whatever to to to, to distribute i think that's what that, at least that's what i picked up on or whatever so i don't know it was just very interesting to me that like of the plan that miles had and the fact that like i don't know if any i want to know did you guys pick up that like edward norton's character miles was the one that like was behind everything i feel like again if it wasn't for the fact of you know oh like oh my god that was my drink oh they're all trying to poison me you were right benoit like you know what i mean like that it would have like uncovered that miles was the one that like took out you know and that i i, I don't even know like i feel like i, I, I don't know it, it's crazy because it's like it's 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 a murder a murder mystery or an attempt on murder like a murder mystery on top of the murder mystery prior that is going on and i feel like it doesn't really it didn't really get good for me because i like when the moment we're like oh like it happened we're like oh like oh so someone's trying to kill me i didn't really i wasn't like that i'm excited until i was like oh my god like she has a twin sister holy shit she's she's like they have their own plan in their own to solve a mystery within a mystery that that miles is trying to set up where it looks like he is the victim that people are going after him to cover up his tracks of and also to not get you know and to not get you know uh what's the word to not get uh blackmailed by duke it was just very awesome to me and i just love the moment where like you know we have uh andy aka helen um you know you know coming across uh your whiskey um aka or or i guess coming across uh what's her name what's her name uh madeline klein's character whiskey and, you know, she says, you know, good, I'm happy that, you know, because she said something about Duke, like, oh, you know, I don't know what to tell Duke's mom. And she kind of, and, and Andy kind of thinks that, oh, they, they broke up. Because she says previously, oh, you should dump that asshole or whatever, or dump, or dump that jerk or whatever. 
and she says, oh, you know, he, he, he got what he deserved. And, and like, Whiskey thinks, oh, my God, dude, you're the one that killed him. You're the one that poisoned him. And she ends up grabbing the, uh, I forget, I think it's the harpoon gun. And she's like, oh, no, like, or whatever. I, I didn't kill anybody. I just thought that was funny because, like, the moment when she grabs the harpoon gun and the, and the lights go out, and then she, and then she's like, I didn't kill him, bitch. Uh, and she's like, that's what, that's what, uh, that's what uh, Andy says. I thought that was hilarious. She's like, I didn't, I didn't kill him. Um, so I, I, I thought that was really funny to me. And then that we kind of get an understanding to like the lead up to the moment where like, we're coming, knowing that that is actually Helen and not Andy. And that's when, that's when it makes sense when Benoit has the tear. And I, I just thought, well, I loved those moments where it kind of like we have, like we, things happen, but then we kind of get an insight on why they happen. I feel like that's why, that, that's what, that, why this movie works so well is because of that part of the story that really made this movie really, really good. On top of again, uh, on uh, you know Kate Hudson's performance, I, I I just really enjoyed her performance in this movie. I just thought it was funny her character and how she just like didn't didn't doesn't mean to like to be in situations that she would get canceled. I just thought that was funny, um, especially because twenty twenty was the, at the height of I feel like really at the height of cancel culture. So I just thought that was funny. On top of like this movie takes place in like like the pandemic exists in this movie. Like in the beginning of this movie, they all wear masks in this movie, and they're all in, uh, they're all in quarantine. And this is the one moment, where, like the one time that they're all actually out of quarantine, and they get to like go to Miles's island where the glass onion house is. So, I just loved how like it was funny because again, uh, you know, uh, Birdie Jane, a aka Kate Hudson's character's you know name, you know, pretty much has the moment where like she ends up coming. To like to, to the meetup where everybody is to get onto the boat to go to the to Miles's island, and she is wearing a chainmail face mask, and she's like, "Oh, thank God, I'm finally able to take this mask off." And I'm like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> you could breathe through that chainmail!" Like, what, what? It's, I thought that was hilarious. It's like it's it see, there's mom moments like that that makes movies so good. And again, she was a very comic relief character, along with there was this one dude that Miles let on the island. His name was a. Uh, I think I forget what the dude's name was. I think his name was uh I'm trying to think. I'm trying to uh Daryl. His name was like Daryl or whatever. I think his name was, and he kept just showing up, uh, like all throughout the island, and he was just chilling. And you know, I I, I thought that was like a, a highlight too. He was just like this random dude, and he would just show up out of nowhere uh, for a comedic relief. Like for, again, when uh when uh well, I, I, wait, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember when um when Andy, or I guess you know, Helen's character, when she's pretending to be Andy, when she's searching through the house to try to find that note with, that has the napkin, you know, she ends up running into, uh, that dude's room. Like, she ends up running into, uh, you know, uh, Daryl's room, and I thought that was hilarious, and she just runs into his room, and he's like, yo, do you want to chill or whatever? And it, it, it's just funny moments like that, I just thought of something, this dude just came out of nowhere as comedic relief, to, uh, of this, of, like, the, the, of the, like, of those moments where it's like, oh my god, the suspense is, like, building up, and, you know, th by the end of this movie, where, like, he ends up burning, you know, uh, Miles ends up burning the, the, the napkin, pretty much saying, oh, look, like, it's, it's, it's your word against mine, or it's, or it's your word against, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's your word against mine, like, look, like, you have no proof that I, you know, took your sister's, you know, company, you have no proof that I, you know, killed your sister, and I killed Duke, like, you have no proof, and everybody here isn't going to agree with you, just as they didn't, they didn't, you know, back your sister up in the courtroom saying that I took, like, that I, like, t that back your sister, back your sister up, that she started the company, and it's like they're doing it again, where like they end up taking aside after, especially after him killing Duke, him con con confirming that he killed, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, Helen's sister and Andy, like he's just confirming things. And, and just, you know, and confessing to these things. And even Ben was like, I can't do much because that was the only evidence we had from that, you know, from that napkin that to, to really get justice for your sister. Like, that, that was it. Uh, there's not much else I can do. And he ends up giving, you know, Helen the, uh, the, the rock that, you know, Miles is trying to, like, produce and, and to really get into, like, you know, into the, like, really trying to, like, mass produce and pretty much get into, into people's homes and, and, and use that as, like, a new fuel so source for the world. And, because his house is running on this stuff. So she ends up pretty much, you know, breaking everything. She ends up, you know, burning everything. And the funny thing is, is that he has the real Mona Lisa in his, in his house. And that was the only thing at, like, that, that actually, like, he 
held dear because it's the real Mona Lisa that you know if that gets destroyed that's 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 life in prison in itself and that's pretty much what ends up happening she ends up uh you know setting like making this big fire in miles's house ends up using that rock to really build up the gas that that rock emits and pretty much ex ends up exploding the place essentially and ends up you know opening up the you know the casing of the mona lisa to burn the mona lisa so that way that dude will go to prison and essentially ends up going to jail and that's pretty much, you know, how the movie really ends is that he ends up pretty much going to jail. And then in, in the midst of, of again, of, uh, you know, Andy pretty much, you know, ruining and knocking over a whole bunch of trophy, like a whole bunch of like, you know, expensive, you know, uh, gla glass, like, you know, uh, you know, expensive glass, you know, sculptures, they all end up ruining his shit too, because they all are like, even though we can't physically you know say something or whatever you know what i mean because you know you ha like we're, we're gonna like let out our anger and we're gonna destroy your shit because you know even though they're like oh even though we're kind of trapped in, in in this you know web that we like kind of you know caused the, uh, this web of like you know you know of uh bullshit even though we kind of did this to ourselves we're gonna like ruin ruin your shit so i just love how they all ended up being with andy just it just you know, pretty much pushing over sculptures and pretty much making so much damage and stuff. And it really didn't get too serious until she started lighting shit on fire. But I just thought that was funny. He was like, oh my God, he's like, he ends up saying like, oh, you, you, you achieved nothing by you doing this, like your petty little, like, you know, your childish, you know, temper tantrum, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, you just destroyed the Mona Lisa, bro. Like you're, you're pretty much going to jail. I just thought that was funny because at that moment I told my brother, like that alone is going to put him in jail. He has the real Mona Lisa and it got destroyed. Like, he's going to jail, bro. I just love that that's how it happened. And Benoit's just chilling. Like, Benoit literally wanted to, like, have her do that because he knew that if she if she destroys the Mona Lisa, and, and like, he's going to prison. And essentially, he knew that's what was going to happen. And also, he knew he was gonna, that was going to prove that he was using that gasoline by it blowing up his place. So, on, on, he didn't just get in trouble for ruining the Mona Lisa. He got in trouble and exposed for him using that 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 dangerous rock that was not tested and is also put in the home to other people's places i don't know what's going to happen to everybody else on the fact that they're all going to now it's like confirm that miles did take andy's you know you know did you know lie about you know him you know coming up with the uh company that andy that made so already they're going to confirm to that that you know he actually you know lied about him making up making the company on top of him you know uh killing andy on top of him killing duke all that's gonna come out and they're all actually finally gonna con they will confess to all the stuff that he did they're not afraid anymore because I, you know what i mean because of all the shit that went down and because they know that they, what they did was wrong and they can't have any more drama and shit happen because of their mistakes so they finally are like okay we can't go go on anymore with this bullshit be, you know, I mean, even though we got this, you know, we, we did this to ourselves, but we can't keep going along where, like, this shit will continue. When will it end? Like, look where it's gotten to now, where it's gotten to murder. It's got, like, they thought from one little thing to one little, like, oh, yeah, you know, oh, well, she got kicked out of, you know, the company, but we're still stable, to, oh, her murder, oh, to Duke's murder, and oh, to a, a whole bunch of millions more murders on the fact that they let out that, you know, that, uh, that untested rock into people's houses as their fuel source where eventually that shit's gonna blow up so they just prevented you know a whole bunch of more murders on them pretty much gonna confess to all the shit he's been doing so all in all this was a pretty damn good sequel to knives out but like i said i still prefer the first movie but i definitely think that this is definitely worth a watch so yet again, guys, um, you know, that was my, you know, uh, review slash spoiler review. I know it was, I know it was long, but I wanted to like talk about the plot line and talk about what I liked and what and things I thought didn't really make much sense. It, it just was a fun time. And I think the, the movie really saves itself, saves itself on the fact that there was such a big twist on the fact that again, yeah, you know, Helen, or, you know, or that, uh, uh, that, uh, why, 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 uh, uh, Andy, have a, have a twin sister named Helen. So I feel like it really wouldn't have, the movie really wouldn't have saved itself if it wasn't for that big twist, in my personal opinion. I feel like that's where I really like locked in. It was like, oh my God, this is actually really good. I still don't think it beats the first one. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but I'm really curious to know, if you, do you guys think that this movie beat Knives Out 1? 
or, or do you guys prefer Knives Out one more than the, the sequel? Do you guys uh, prefer uh, you know? Um, do you guys not like this one? And you guys, I think yeah, that's what I already said. So do you guys prefer this one? Or do you guys prefer the other one? Do you guys, uh, do you guys like? What did you guys think of the story? Do you guys like? Did you guys really like lock in when that big twist happened, like I did, or did you guys like love the thing the entire way and you're, and you think that the like this overall storyline beat the first one? Again, they're kind of like two different things on their own. I feel like they're really not really comparable, other than the fact that I felt more self-contained in the first one and felt more like kind of like linear with the story and like it was kind of going in the same direction. This kind of felt like it was going like up, down, over like it just felt like it was kind of going everywhere, and I feel like it really didn't get good, and I feel like it really couldn't lock in until that big like you know, holy shit moment where, like, we end up finding out that actually it's been Helen the entire time and actually, you know, uh, her si her other sister, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, her other sister, uh, Andy, was, you know, has is, is been, you know, dead and stuff. So, I don't know. I just feel like the, 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 it really didn't get good for me until that part. Um, but yet again, guys, here, if you are new to the channel, subscribe to the channel, put those notifications, like this video. I'd love to have you guys here, a part of the fam, part of the channel. All about spreading love, positivity, and motivation. And yet again, guys, we are almost to way into 600 subscribers. Right now, I'm going to say we're at 598, almost to 600 subscribers. Um, I really want to try to get to, uh, I would love to get to like 620 if we could get to that. That'd be freaking amazing. Um, before we really get into like the new year, um, you know, January 1st, I think, is next next sunday or next i think it's next monday is january is january for i think it's next monday or next sunday i can't quite remember um but guys you know 2020 okay, okay but 2020 like guys like i said 2023 is going to be a big year for the channel there's a lot of like upcoming shows i can't wait to like review and also react to on my patreon whether it be you know uh you know disney plus shows whether it be from star wars or marvel or or stuff that's come that's coming out on Amazon and stuff that's coming out in the theaters with my Marvel and stuff like that and, and just movies in general. There's a ton of content coming out next year and I'm super excited. And like I said, this was really the best time for this movie to come out because again, these like everybody loves like a movie that can get the whole family together and these two movies definitely are 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 movies that you can watch with the family. Um, because again, you know, they're, they're, they're murder mysteries, but they're like fun murder mysteries. They're not something that's like, you know, like too serious. So I think that these are very like movies that people would want to watch on like Christmas. People would want to watch on like, Thanksgiving and stuff like that. Like people would watch like a, a movie like this in general. Like, you know, I feel like this feels like more of like a, a summertime, you know, kind of like, you know, movie you would watch. Cause I think this movie was supposed to come out like, I think I want to say last year. I, I can't remember. I think this movie got held back because of the pandemic. I'm not quite sure, like, of being released. Um, I know this movie was released out in theaters a couple of weeks ago. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely think that, you know, you could watch this movie really anytime. But it, has, it feels like it has, like, a summer vibe. And I want to say, like, Knives Out has, like, more of, like, a fall, like, Thanksgiving vibe. So, I mean, either way, these this is just a perfect time where, like, people want to watch movies around the holiday season. And I feel like the, you could watch the other Knives Out one and this one back-to-back -back if you really wanted to. So, I feel like with a perfect time where people are looking for movies to watch with their families and this movie comes out. And especially, you know, they're like, oh, Knives Out. They're like, oh, uh, Glass Onion, Knives Out, Glass Onion. Oh, we should probably watch Knives Out 1. So, you know, for people that haven't watched Knives Out 1, this is actually a great opportunity for you to go watch that movie and then watch this movie. Or vice versa, because like I said, there is no connection to the first one. So if you really wanted to, you could watch this one and be like, oh, I'm going to go check out Knives One now. Knives Out 1 now. So really, you could do that too. Um, but yet again, guys, I give this movie probably, I'm going to say, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's definitely high up, high up, on, high up on my ranking. I mean, I, I definitely say this is a good movie. I don't even really know what to give it. I, I, I definitely would watch this again, and it's not a bad movie. Um, but yeah, guys, yet again, again, that was the video. Uh, I hope everybody has a great day, a safe day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.